and there you go it's trying to access the trending titles which is our custom tool and it is able to get all the three titles that we are passing from this custom api that we have created before openai's assistant api allows you to use custom knowledge base as well as tools such as calling third-party external api to create powerful ai application to serve user queries however what if your business have internal sensitive apis that cannot be shared to internet or for that matter cannot be shared to the openai system to be able to use their assistance api capability if you are looking for a solution to this problem then that's what we are going to discuss in this video. Hi, my name is Avijit. You are watching Now Together, where I try to simplify latest tech and innovation for your future and your business. Let's get started. Welcome back. In this video, we are going to explore a LangChain powered open source project called OpenGPT. We are not only going to discuss the feature of this project, but also we are going to take a deep dive into its code and change the code wherever it's necessary to make you familiarize with the project in details so that you can take leverage of this project for your business use case. The video will follow the same structure as I have done with my previous videos. That means at the start, we are going to take a look at the architecture of how we are going to set up this project. And then we are going to quickly set up this project in my local system and going to show you all the features that is available to you in the next step we are going to take a look at its code base and how it is all set up so that we can change the code wherever it's necessary and make our own assistant api and in the final step we will create a custom api and convert that into a langchain tools and use it with this project the video will have a lot of information so stay focused and let's dive in Okay, so let's talk about the architecture and the design. So this is a very simple architecture. The blue box that you see, it's my Windows machine. The OpenGPT project, we will run it as container. OpenGPT comes with three containers out of the box. One is the front end that will display you the UI where you will configure all the GPTs. Then you have the back end where you do all the processing. And then you have a Redis, which is used as vector store or maybe store your chat with your GPTs that you will create. We also have a light LLM that is used as an AI API proxy. So basically what will happen is for any request in front end, we'll call back end. Back end will use the light LLM as AI API proxy. And in the light LLM, I'm actually consciously selecting whether to use my locally hosted large language model for some GPTs to make it absolutely free of cost or for some more complex use cases, I'm using either OpenAI model or some open router based models to suffice that requirements. You can also see there is some custom APIs. Now I have created the custom APIs using N18. I've already covered about N18 in a previous video. I will attach the link in the description. So what is happening here really is if the GPT needs to call any external third party API, which is this custom API in this case, I've converted the custom API into a Langchain tool that this backend will use to call these APIs. I hope this all making sense to you. Now with that said, next we'll go to our project directory and we'll start setting up the OpenGPT. Okay, so now we are at our project directory. What we'll do as a first step is we are going to clone this repository. So we'll do git clone. Yep. So the repository is cloned. We'll go inside OpenGPTs. Now, when you go inside OpenGPT, you will see a couple of files. So in this instance, we are going to use Docker Compose. Now remember, you can run OpenGPT completely in your local without using the Docker Compose or Docker Container. But I would like to keep this uh, Python environment separate because I've been facing with a lot of the Python package management issue recently with a lot of the project running in my local. Make sure you have installed Docker Desktop and Docker Compose in your Windows or whatever OS that you are using. Now, if you look closely, the OpenGPT have two folder. One is backend, one is frontend. So frontend contains all the frontend related codes and the backend contains everything around the custom logic and Langchain tools and everything else. Now to run the Docker container, first you need to do is just copy this and just rename it to .env because we need to set up a few things. First, you need an OpenAI API key and we are not going to use any of the other stuff here. We do not have a proxy or anything. That's good. So the next that we need to do is go to the Docker Compose. So it's running the front end container, then it's running the back end container and then the Redis one. That's good. Now, one of the things that to note here, it's doing the build here. So that means what we have to do is run docker compose up hyphen hyphen build. Usually, if you're not building anything, you don't have to run it. But because in this case, it's going to build the container right in your system, uh, we'll just use this command. Now, this is going to take some time. So I'll pause the video and I'll come back when the build is finished. Okay, so the build is done. Um, you can see the container is all created. Uh, I'm seeing some error. It's asking for a proxy URL. So basically it's asking to set a proxy URL here. 
I'm not sure what proxy URL is. Let me take a look at the documentation. Okay, so I have tried to search uh, more information about proxy URL, what that is. I couldn't find a lot of information in their documentation. So what I have done is I have kind of deleted the proxy URL from here. And instead what I have done is I went to the backend and then app and then you see the llm.py open this llm.py you will see this get openai llm what i have done is i have commented it out and then added my own code there um, this is nothing but what i have done just is i have removed this proxy url specific if and else logic instead of that i'm just saying that use the gpt 3.5 model and i hope this is going to connect to the default openai url using the chat openai langchain module now I'm going to save this and what I have to do is just do a rebuild and now the rebuild is successful. Now backend is loaded and I don't see any error. That means this change have worked. Now what we will do, we will go through this localhost 5173, this URL and there you go. So this is the UI interface. So you can create three type of GPT here. One is a simple chatbot, like you can create a chatbot with a specific personas or characters. You can create a rag like GPT where you can add your own custom knowledge base. And you can also create an assistant type GPT where you can have your own custom knowledge base as well as you have access to different langchain based tools like you know you can use archive to get details about research paper use tabular search engine so these are the list of tools that comes uh, you know default with the package now what we are going to do as a first step we are going to create a quick rag agent i will name it as consultancy gpt add my consultancy document here and i'm going to save it now you might face another issue like if you face this photo to unprocessable entity this is generally because you have a cookie issue now that is why what i have done is i have now opened an incognito and i'm going to create the same consultancy gpt once again and as you can see it has created the vector index and there you go it's created now now if i ask this consultancy gpt what all business consulting service over it provides it has used the retrieval function that means it has used the vector store got all the information from the vector store like from the documents and then it is able to fetch the right information now next what we are going to do is instead of using the openai's chat gpt model we are going to use our locally hosted large language model and see if that works for that you have really two options you can import the chat olama model and instead of chat openai you can use chat olama and specify the chat olama model if it is running local it should be able to connect to the chat olama and you are able to work with that but we are not going to do that what we are going to do instead is we are going to create in another git bash and we are going to run our light llm api proxy if it gets a request on gpt 3.5 turbo it's going to in turn connect to open Hermes model to enable olama i'm going to enable wsl so i'll just check whether it's running or not yeah it's running already my light llm is ready what we have to do now next is we'll just add the base url parameter here we'll specify the url as host.docker.internals colon 8000 because my light llm is running outside the docker container where the open gpt is running now that's all set i have saved it and um, i don't need to restart anything because as you can see it has detected change and it has reloaded the application let's say discovery session with a widget now you can see that it has used the retrieval and then it is able to answer correctly that this is the link to book the discovery meeting so going back to the architecture diagram this is how we have set up our light llm api proxy to use our locally hosted large language model with this gpt application as a next step what we are going to do is we are going to create a gpt style assistant using you know using both the knowledge base as well as using the tools that's provided by the langchain by default it provides all these tools what we are going to do is for simplicity purpose we are going to use let's say the archive tool and, and the wikipedia tool to create a very quick gpt like assistant now let's name it knowledge gpt now what i'm going to do is i'm going to ask this knowledge gpt to find a research paper uh, on ai impact on cyber security now you can see that this has res responded some json which really doesn't make sense right the reason is because we are using a locally hosted large language model now in my testing i couldn't find any large language model that is trained with um, you know custom function calling that you get with the open ai's model like gpt 3.5 or gpt 4 because the locally hosted large language model lacks the capability of doing function calling what we have to do is 
we have to like comment this one out so that we so that we don't use the locally hosted large language model instead we are going to use the gpt 3.5 turbo model and then we are going to restart our light llm now my light llm is started now we'll come back uh, to the browser and we are going to ask the same question and now you see it has been able to do the custom tool calling and it has able to fetch the response correctly that's because gpt 3.5 turbo or gpt 4 models are trained on custom function calling now if you ask me is there a way we can train the locally hosted large language model with function calling the short answer is yes we can but that's a topic for another video we'll try to explore if we can do that there is also another alternative where you can use langchain's pydentic to open ai function converter to use a prompt structure and use a locally hosted large language model to do function calling in this project also i have seen that they have created an xml agent which is doing the same thing um, but i have not found a way to use this xml agent with locally hosted large language model that's something for me to take away with and do some more investigation and if i find a way where i can use the locally hosted large language model to do function calling i'll definitely update the community on the discord or in the patreon so make sure you join both the discord and the patreon where you can get this information whenever i find a way out now that we are able to use these tools the next question that i had in my mind was what if i have my own customer API. What if a business who wants to use this OpenGPT, they just want to use it because they have a sensitive API that they cannot publish to internet, rather they can use the OpenGPT in their internal network and call the APIs as and when necessary and create an assistant API or GPT. For that, what we have done is I have created a custom API in my NA10 instance. Now this NA10 instance is running on my AWS cloud. I have already covered about how to install NA10 in your local in much details in a previous video. I'll attach the link into the description. So what I have done in this workflow is I have used a webhook module, used an authentication header. Basically, whenever this webhook will be called through an API like call um, is going to set this static um, trending titles and then it will respond to the webhook. I can further customize this workflow to connect let's say Google SERP API, get the Google search data or Google YouTube data to get real-time trend but for this demo purpose I have kept it very simple. So what is actually going to happen is if I do this call and provide the API key, this is going to give me these uh, trending titles. So this is what this um, custom API is doing really. So what we want to do is we want to convert this custom API that I've just created into an Langchain tool that this OpenGPT can use. So ideally the custom tool that we will create should appear somewhere here and we should be able to use it um, for our assistant GPT, right? So for that, what we have to do is first come here in the code base. Now, all the tools that you see here is specified in this tools.py file. Now, first, what we have to do is create our own custom tool. Now, for that, what we are going to do is going to create a file called trendingtitles.py. We are going to do a few of the imports. So the typing module actually helps to annotate the variables with their type. So Langchain's Pydantic module is really interesting. This is used for any kind of data model validation. So Langchain Callback Manager is usually a module that is used to do the callbacks. And we are also going to use the Request module and the Callback Manager together to create the call. This, is, this base tool is used to create Langchain tools if you are creating any custom tool. Now I have already created the code, so I'm just going to paste it here and I'm going to explain you step by step. So this trending titles API wrapper is just, it's kind of a wrapper class for the API that we are going to call. API key is, is a string and then we define the get trending titles function within this class where we make the actual call. So it uses the request.post and actually call this API. Now, if you see this API, we are not actually calling with any of the arguments or parameter or any body with this request. So trending titles input model is a very minimal class that we have created. This can be expanded, but because we are not using any any input with the API, that's why it's, it is kept as kind of blank. So it just uh, defined for the consistency. So later on, if we modify the API to have input, we can later on update this class to kind of do all the type validations and everything else for the input. So trending titles query run is the custom tool that we are defining, which is going to use the API wrapper to call the API. 
right so this is where we specify the description in details so this description is kind of going to be used by the large language models such as openai's gpt 3.5 or 4 to kind of decide which tool to use when a query is made to the gpt or the assistant api now that i have created the code for the custom tool what we have to do is we have to specify this tool into this tools.py so that my backend open gpt service would know that there is a custom tool that exists which it can use so first thing first what we have to do is we will import this three class that we have specified in the trending titles.py and then what we will do just like the other tool as you can see here we'll add a method of get trending titles and it's going to get the api key from the env file so what we have to do is set this api key here so we will copy the api key from the postman where we have tested and set it here and so this is basically going to face the api key and it's going to call the wrapper class with the api key and then call the trending titles query run with the api wrapper and then what we are going to do is in the available tools we'll make the trending titles to be there then in the available tools of trending titles we are going to define the function that we have just defined here and that's it and i'm going to do a build again so this will ensure it will install everything that is needed okay so now we can see that it has been able to load the application successfully and yeah we can see that our custom tool is available to be used for the assistant type gpts so let's give it a test i'll give it a name as trending gpt and then i'll say yes here just to see it's actually calling the tool or not and then I'm, let's say going to use another tool like wikipedia archive so that i wanted to test that whether the assistant is able to pick up the right tool for the right query and then i'm going to save it then i'm going to ask the same question i've asked before so it's using the archive tool now so that means that's good so it hasn't used our custom tools for this question now i'm going to ask find me a trending titles for a youtube video on on hacking gpts and there you go it's trying to access the trending titles which is our custom tool and it has able to get all the three titles that we are passing from this custom api that we have created before so our custom tool is working and you can use the same approach to create your custom tools by calling your own custom apis or maybe your own custom functions as you want to use with these open gpts now, I really hope this all made sense to you. If you have any question, confusion, doubt, please write down in the comment. I generally check all the comments and try to answer. But if you want to get more support, please join the Discord or Patreon community because there are other members who can help with your doubts or any of the issues that you have stuck because many people may have faced the same issue and can actually help you when I am probably busy with something else. Now, I generally bring such type of interesting content on AI and recent tech and innovations. So please stay tuned for more such videos and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.